Hi, welcome back. Now, before we move on to step two, we have to make sure you've mastered step one. It has to be 100% right or we're dead in the water. So let's take a look at what you came up with that step one list, the one with the columns. I'm willing to bet that your positive column is much shorter than your negative column. Am I right? Now can you admit that you've lost control of your life due to your disease? If so, repeat after me. Hi, my name is, say your name, and I am a, say your disease. If you can't say this with absolute conviction, you need to go back and work step one until you can. Done? All right, let's move on. Came to believe a power greater than us could restore us to sanity. Translation, we had to finally admit that God exists and that he alone can bring some order to our chaotic lives. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh man, God, here we go with the religious freak stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Relax, I get it. The idea of religion sent me running for the hills too. Of all the steps, this one's the trickiest. Because most of us have spent our entire lives building a tremendous resentment against God. We've spent a lot of time and effort dismissing the idea of a divine creator. Now, we're told we have to acknowledge that such a being exists in order to straighten out our lives. What a ripoff, right? Listen, <laughs> I get it. I've been there. Religion's filled with holier-than-thou hypocritical bigots, right? I mean, who wants to participate in an institution where people look down their noses and condemn others to hell? Only a fool would surround himself with a bunch of judgmental zealots. Well, I've got good news. You're not mad at God, you're mad at religion. There's a huge difference. The church happens to be an institution run by human beings. Humans, by nature, are fallible. Even the scriptures show a God at constant odds with his own followers because of their stiff-necked ignorance. It's a tale as old as time. There's more good news. God requires only that you follow him, not his people. Dealing with God's followers is in no way a prerequisite for establishing a relationship with him. Uh, by the way, there's no theological basis for believing God's inherently male. Him, her, it, whatever works for you. Still not convinced? Not to worry. There's another option. Fake it till you make it. You don't have to believe in God with all your heart, mind, and soul in order to continue on to the next step. You just have to try. See, a lot of people struggle with this concept. In order to get through step two, they just pick something, anything to represent God. The ocean, a tree, even a doorknob becomes their representation of a higher power. Uh, they focus their prayer and spiritual comfort on that object until God reveals himself in his true form. They fake it till they make it. Now, still others choose the group as their God. The rooms of recovery, along with the people who make up the group, become the embodiment of a higher power. Now, a word of warning. Some things to consider when making inanimate objects and the group your God. First, a doorknob offers little in the way of comfort during times of struggle, never answers prayer, and succeeds only at achieving total stagnation as a deity. In other words, don't expect much response from a doorknob. The group, much like the church, is comprised of human beings who struggle with their own defects. People have their own problems and will inevitably fail you. Now, I'm not knocking these methods. If they manage to introduce you to God, I'm all for it. Just be sure to have realistic expectations when choosing these paths. Okay, now it's time for some step work. Take out a piece of paper and write the answer to these questions. Uh, first, list some experiences in your life that caused you to lose faith in God. Second, what are some of the negative things that could happen if you pray to a higher power on a daily basis, even if you're faking it? What are some positive things that could happen? When you're done with these questions, I encourage you to continue on with some of the step work attached to this video. Once you've settled on your belief in a higher power, you're gonna have to communicate with him, her, it, whatever. Uh, and that's where prayer comes in. Now don't worry, Prayer is nothing to be scared of. It's just like 
talking to a friend over coffee, uh, eyes closed, open on your knees, driving, whatever. God doesn't care how you communicate with him, just as long as you try. So let's try a step two prayer as a dry run. All right, pray with me. I pray for an open mind, so I may come to believe in a power greater than myself. I pray for humility and the continued opportunity to increase my faith. I don't want to be crazy anymore. Amen. It's that simple. Yeah, I know, I know. Talking to an imaginary dude in the sky can make you feel like an idiot, right? One question. To what lengths are you willing to go in order to regain control of your life? Any lengths? Then it's time to stuff your pride, put on your big boy pants, and hit your knees. God either is or he isn't. He exists or he doesn't. There's no in between. You draw nearer to him, he'll draw nearer to you. Now, nobody ever said change would be easy. Trying something new takes work, and this method has worked for millions of people who suffered with the same condition as you. Bottom line, now it's time for you to find belief in a higher power, any higher power, and understand there's something bigger than you out there. That's it. Find your higher power and start praying. And just remember, your best thinking got you where you are today. So maybe it's time to give someone else the wheel. See you in step three.